Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Basketball Conference, the ACC football podcast. My name is Joey Weaver. He is Mike McDaniel. Mike, week eight, five ACC games, including some ranked action, some weeknight action. We got a full slate. How are you doing? You ready to go? Ready. As ready as I can be, Joey, for somehow week eight already. <laughs> Hard to believe. It has gone quick. I, I feel like this has been one of the quicker seasons in recent memory. It's like a blink, and all of a sudden it's like late October, and we're we're almost two thirds of the way through the season. So I, it's been fun so far. I don't love that it's you know we're working our way towards the end, but we're definitely getting a, a better idea of what some of these teams are. I feel like at least. Oh yeah, I think so too. I think so too, and like we're at the point of the season where every conference game and every big time matchup just means more right you're getting closer and closer to kind of figuring mm-hmm. out where th- where things are stacked division wise and i guess for the final season division wise right I mean, kind of where you sit yep. in hopes of trying to get yourself to an acc championship game so yeah this is another big week in the acc there's obviously like one really really big matchup that we'll talk about in detail but there's a couple of other games that i think could be pretty pivotal in terms of atlantic and coastal division races so we'll get into those two that's right. That's right. Yeah, I mean, I think we have a, a pretty good idea of what these teams are at this point. So surely that'll uh, reflect itself in our picks, right? Absolutely. That's how this usually works. What could possibly go wrong? Let's kick it off, Mike. Five games this weekend. We start on Thursday night, 730 on ESPN. The Virginia Cavaliers, which as we say, Mike, Virginia is awesome. They are on the road in Atlanta, taking on my Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Georgia Tech, a three-point home favorite in this game. Total is 47. Um, Mike, this is – I told you two weeks ago that Georgia Tech was going to be favored in this game. I've told you, basically since Brent Key took over, we saw them the last two games, like they should win this game. If you want to know kind of like where my headspace is at, just in general being a Georgia Tech fan, I have some trust issues here. I don't know if I can trust Georgia Tech to win this game and perform the way that I expect them to. I, I'm worried that we have been hyping ourselves up and uh, you know getting getting in the feels on Twitter a little bit. And I am I'm a little nervous that we have been hyping up Brent Key's program a little too much and that we are going to come crashing back down to earth on Thursday night. Yeah, and UVA is definitely the team to exploit that, right? Right. <laughs> Right? I, well, uh, Whoa, what? What, no, wait what, is, what is... Why does this happen? It's like every time we bring up... Every time we bring up Virginia, this song just starts playing. Nobody knows why. We gotta we gotta look into making this thing stop. We gotta figure this out. Anyways, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Maybe it is Virginia, Mike. Yeah, speaking of which, uh, do you have another sound ready for me, Joey? I think you might. Scott, Joey, have, you guys got another sound ready? I have me? lots of sounds at the ready. I got I got one for you. Georgia Tech, lock it up. You better lock it up. You better lock it up. No, you lock it up. Lock it up. Lock it up. Lock it up. Please. Yeah. You're a braver I mean, man than I. We're we're locking we're locking this game up, Joey. I, UVA is UVA is abhorrent. I mean, they're terrible. And Georgia Tech, if we've learned anything over the two games I've seen Brent Key coach, it's that they can beat mediocre teams. Right? And UVA's bad. So we can kind of check that box mm-hmm. off. I don't see how you can't feel confident going into this game, Joey. Like, Georgia Tech's at home. It's a Thursday night game. Vibes are good around the program right now in terms of Brent Key and how mm-hmm. the teams looked. And vibes are really, really bad around the UVA program because they're just simply not very good. They haven't been good around Brennan Armstrong all year. Defensively, they've obviously taken some steps back. Offensive line's been really bad. They're having trouble running the ball. Like there, there are so many issues with UVA before you even get to the Mickey Mouse coaching staff that like I can't even keep them all straight. <laughs> and this is a really, this is a really, really bad, bad, bad football team right now. Like way worse than I thought. This is the worst team in the ACC. And uh, I, I would say that it's indisputable, but it's not indisputable. It's actually very much disputable because Virginia Tech might also be the worst team in the ACC. So they'll battle it out for the Commonwealth Cup here in about a month. 
and we'll see really who the worst team in the ACC is. But until that point, I think UVA is worse, and we'll see how that plays itself out. But I think Georgia Tech wins this football game. I just think they're they're trending in a much better direction. They're at home. It's Thursday night. I don't like anything about the UVA program right now where they're at, and Georgia Tech's got plenty of issues. <laughs> like we know they got plenty of issues, but. UVA, UVA is the team to exploit those issues? Man, I don't know. I, I don't see it. I just don't see the it. 20, the 2022 Commonwealth Cup, a.k.a. a race for the bottom. I, I, look, I love it. That'll be great. Um, I, I will say a couple things here. So, number one, I think that this line, like, I think that what you're saying and what we have seen basically from these two programs, like, in the month of October, all that tracks. Like, what we've seen from Georgia Tech versus what we've seen in, in Virginia – in the last like three weeks, including the bye week, you know, obviously, but the, the two games that they played before the bye weeks, like, yeah, Georgia Tech's a, a significantly better team right now. Um, but I think you're seeing in the line some of that like kind of questioning that is hanging out there of like, well, how much, how much, you know, was how reliable was it? How how repeatable was it? The way that they beat Pittsburgh, the way that they beat Duke, um, et cetera, and, and Virginia, like. Is Virginia really, truly, objectively bad, or have they just been kind of bad at some of the details, bad in the red zone, um, you know, losing turnover battles, like some of these things that are kind of on the margins that are that are causing them costing them games where they're really not that far off. I, I think there is some of that in play. My other thought here, too, though, is if we go back to something that I have said for, honestly, like over a year now, is... Georgia Tech under under Jeff Collins was underperforming the quality of its roster. Um, Georgia Tech had a top half roster in the ACC and was losing to teams that it was more talented than. I'm wondering a little bit, and it's kind of astonishing how differently we're talking about this Georgia Tech program than we were talking about them like three four weeks ago. But under Brent Key, it's kind of seeming like they are going to perform a little closer to roster quality. Which makes me think that, you know, they have the goods to beat Virginia. They are better than Virginia at a number of spots. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take for I'm gonna take Georgia Tech as well here. Uh, I'm gonna take them to cover the three. I don't feel great about it. Again, I have trust issues. It's a whole thing. We're, well, you know I, I talked to my therapist about about Syracuse's offense, Georgia Tech trust issues. There there's a few things that we that we get into. It's money well spent, trust me. But like I, I, I just I don't I don't trust them to lock this up. I'm nervous a little bit that they're not going to be what we thought they were over the last you know two three weeks and what we've been feeling good about on social media and blah blah blah. But you're right, the vibes have been really good, and it's a team that seems like they're playing with some confidence, playing closer to their capabilities. You've got Brent Key now auditioning for a new AD. Um, that you know Jay Bat got announced last Friday. He's he's in place. He'll be at this game. Um, they're trying to bring in the crowd. Um, you've got a few different sources, of people trying to, you know, make it a point. Hey, everybody, come to the stadium. Like, let's, you know, I know people haven't been been buying tickets, haven't been showing up because they were protesting the whole Jeff Collins thing. Maybe, you know, if they're if he's not here, come and support the team. So it might be a pretty good atmosphere in Atlanta Thursday night. We will see. Um, but yeah, Georgia Tech, and then I'll take under forty seven. Uh, this is a low total. I think probably the more interesting thing about this whole Brent Keys uh, era so far has been that Georgia Tech's defense has been playing better. Um, and especially for a team like Virginia that has struggled in the red zone, um, struggled to finish drives, has had a couple of bad turnovers, as you know, Brent Armstrong was, has been wont to do. I think this is a game that might end up a little bit more low scoring. So 47, not, not a particularly high total. Give me the under. I'm not interested in locking anything up here, though. Yeah, like seventeen, ten, twenty to thirteen, like that range. That would make for a uh, miserable th Thursday night. But hey, all's well that ends well. Could see it. <laughs> Could see it. I mean, this is not going to be a pleasant viewing experience for anybody who doesn't have a stake in the game. Yeah, like I'm not worth, going to enjoy watching it. Worth pointing out too, though. Again, like. Pittsburgh and Duke, and I don't know what kind of games they were having, but Georgia Tech's defense those first three quarters of both of those games was pretty stifling. I think they've allowed less than, like, 17 points across those two games in the first three quarters of the game. Like, so, don't know if that's fluky. Don't know if there's something to that. Maybe, maybe not. But, 
you know, again, just things that make me think this is kind of an under type of game. There's a reason why I'm locking Georgia Tech up. <laughs> and it's because they're better. Mike, I'm a well-trained Atlanta sports fan. I'm just waiting on the other shoe to drop. Hey, I have fair enough. <laughs> no no arguments for me. I'm just letting you know why I'm why I'm picking it the way I'm picking it. No yeah, arguments for me enough. on your end though. I, I get it. <laughs> Georgia Tech in the under for the both of us. Um and Georgia Tech is locked up for Mike. Yeah. Mike, that preview brought to you by Section103.com, the Internet's premier place for buying all sorts of wonderful Georgia Tech apparel. We're recording this Wednesday night. Uh, this game, this, this will probably be posted Thursday morning, um, hopefully. But in any case, if you're looking for something to wear to the game, it's probably a little too late. But if you want something to wear to later games, you should go to Section103.com. Um, certainly, as the weather cools off, I'm wearing one of the hoodies right now. It's one of the uh, the performance hoodies. You can see it's in the official Tech Gold. It's got the official word mark on it. It is incredibly comfortable. It is wonderful. It looks great. It will keep you all sorts of comfortable, warm, and good-looking at the game. So go to section103.com, find you one of these. They've got T-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies. Again, the, the official Tech Gold, all the official word marks, the ATL logo. They've got some stickers. They've got all sorts of great things there. So go check them out and use promo code GOACC for 10% off your first order. Um, we tell them we sent you. We keep an eye on their social medias too, uh, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, you can sign up for their email list. Uh, I, I've just put in an order for the Brent Key sweatshirt. He's been running around the sidelines in this like sleeveless hoodie thing that uh, Section One Hundred Three just put in uh, pre-orders for. By the time you're hearing this, it'll be too late to pre-order one of those. But again, keep an eye on their social medias to find deals and, and special products coming. So. Uh, you can look like Brent Key if you want to. Uh, he's a he's a good-looking man. He's a pretty man. You want to look like him. Once again, use promo code GOACC for 10% off your first order at section103.com. Yes. <laughs> Deal. Let's go on to Saturday, Mike. At noon on ABC, we have a ranked matchup. I think we have an, an even bigger headliner game of the weekend later to come. But for this one, we have the number 14 Syracuse Orange uh, on the road taking on the number five Clemson Tigers. This is at noon on ABC. Clemson, a 13 and a half point favorite at home. Total is 49 and a half. Um, Syracuse has been getting some national attention, being a ranked team, being an undefeated team. Um, everyone's starting to feel pretty good. Hey, Dino, for the second time in his tenure, kind of putting it all together for a year. Syracuse, given Clemson some problems in the past, Mike, is this another uh, another rendition of that? Is this is this Dino going into Death Valley, giving Clemson some problems? Nope, it's not. It's Ooh. not. Um, it could be. It could be early in the game, but I just don't think. I don't think Syracuse can hang for four quarters with this Clemson you don't, team. You don't think the the Dabo post game press conference sounds something like? It was big. You don't think we're getting that from Dabo? An all-time Dabo clip. An all-time Dabo clip. Man, that was I the was... Notre Dame Hurricane game, wasn't it? It it was. It was the Notre Dame Hurricane <laughs> game against Deshaun Kaiser. Yep. Man, that was first year of this show. That was big time. Yeah, that was big time. Um. Yeah, man, I don't. I don't see it with Syracuse. I don't see it. I I was listening to um off campus on ESPNU Radio today on Sirius, and they were interviewing Dabo. And man, he just feels so comfortable with where his team's at and where how DJ's looked off, you know, offensively this year and kind of how his defense is starting to, you know, round into form. They they can just win games. Jacob Hester and Andy Staples were hosting today and they brought up how like Clemson has shown the ability to win games a lot of different ways, right? Like mm -hmm. you gotta get into a shootout with Wake Forest. Hey, it might go to a couple overtimes but no problem we'll get it done how about slugfest next week against nc state yeah we can we can handle that yep. like clemson has found just different ways to win right and Dabo actually even brought up the boston college game where offensively he didn't really have it but he thought that they played their best defensive game of the year in the boston mm -hmm. college game which hard to dispute you know with the way they looked um so I know to play I, your best defensive game against boston yeah, yeah, anyways say, keep yeah. going keep not going. with that offensive line yeah um <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, I look at this, and, you know, I think the one area where, you know, Clemson's defense I think is weakest, you know, relatively speaking, would be the secondary. 
But I think the secondary has been playing a lot better, and I don't think Syracuse has playmakers at receiver to exploit the the weakness in Clemson's defense. And, man, I just don't see Sean Tucker. Sean Tucker's had a lot of trouble running behind this offensive line all year, and I don't think that's all of a sudden going to get better against Clemson, right? Probably the best defensive line they faced all year. Brian Brissy's back, right? I mean, he played last week. Um, they're they're getting healthy. Uh, I, I just don't I don't see it right offensively for Syracuse for four quarters. Then defensively, like I think Syracuse's defense is pretty good, but also like who's the best offense they've played this year? I mean, it's probably uh, so far. Syracuse. Yeah, would you take I, I so far, yes, I agree. But like after Saturday, are you taking Clemson's offense or Purdue's? Like That's a good question. That is actually. a good question. They're very they're very different. They're very mm-hmm. different offensively. And Purdue's been Purdue's been good. I'm not I'm not here to slander Purdue at all. I Purdue's been good on offense. They've been tough. Um Different but, stylistically, equally roughly equally effective, I feel like. Yeah. We have to run some numbers to back that up. But, I mean, Mm -hmm. point being, like, this feels like another Will Shipley game, doesn't it? Probably. Like, this feels like another Will Shipley game where they're just going to give him the ball and he's just going to run downhill and carry the ball, like, 20 times again. Doesn't it just – it just kind of has that feel to it. And Syracuse is going to have to, at some point, stop that. And I think they'll be able to hang for a couple quarters – I just feel like the second half is just gonna be t- it's gonna be tough, man. And Clemson showed mm-hmm. what they can do. At- Clemson has shown all year actually what they can do after halftime. Even thinking back to like the opener against Georgia Tech, right? Like that game was tight at halftime, and then Clemson pulled away in the second half. They've kind of been doing that a decent amount this year, right? Where like NC State game, pretty tight at halftime, came out of halftime, bat out of hell defensively. Last mm-hmm. week against Florida State. Like, Will Shipley takes the kickoff coming out of halftime 70 yards, and they score on the next play. They're just 17 tough. nothing in the middle eight. Yeah. 17 and 17 nothing in the middle eight. They are just a really tough team to deal with. Um, yep. From, from an adjustment standpoint, they've been getting better at that all year. I don't, I don't see it over four quarters. I like Clemson by, like, 17 here. And I think this game goes over, by the way. I do feel like this is a, a little bit one of those correlated parlay type of games where – if you think it goes over, there is no way you're picking Syracuse. And if you think it, it if you think Syracuse is going to cover, there's no way you're taking the over. Like it's either Syracuse and the over, or if if you're going to take the over, take Clemson too. Because I, I really just don't know how many points Syracuse is going to score here. Honestly, um, I we've talked about Syracuse's offense, and I, I joke about I don't understand it, and I talk to my therapist, whatever. But like this is this is the game against Clemson. It is a a good well-coached, talented defense that is going to snuff out a lot of, I think, what Syracuse is going to try to do on offense. Uh, they are going to get home on Garrett Schrader on the pass rush a few times. Um, they are, I don't think they're going to let Sean Tucker break contain more than a few times. You know, it's They're going to make it very difficult for Syracuse's offense to operate. Um, you mentioned that Syracuse does not have playmakers on the outside. They have playmaker on the outside. Playmaker. Ronda Gadsden. Yes. One. What do they have beyond that? I don't know. And right. it doesn't seem like, you know, nearly that much. And and I think honestly, you know, the more that I think about this, it's like, what do I expect from a team in twenty twenty two in Syracuse, New York? Do I really expect them to have like a full war chest of of skill talent players that are gonna be able to, you know, run rough shot on people? Not really. But can they get you know a really good running back in Sean Tucker, and can they find a really good wide receiver and just ride those guys? I mean, Boston College doesn't have a ton of skill talent, a ton of it, but they've got Zay Flowers and and Pat Garwo, and you can just ride those guys and your quarterback. And, and I mean, so I think it's it's okay to build things that way. I guess is what I'm saying. And I'm again, once again, therapy session, trying to talk through my feelings, trying to understand how I feel about Syracuse's offense. But the point is, um, actually, give me Syracuse in this game. I'll take Syracuse in the points. Ooh. I the thing that I I am hanging on here. This is kind of a lot of points here, and and the thing I'm going to say is Syracuse's defense has been very good 
And one of the things I think that makes them as good as they are is Tony White, their defensive coordinator, runs like a 3-3-5 defense that is is particularly kind of complex and kind of difficult for quarterbacks, especially when they're not used to seeing it. And I, I realize this is at least the second time, if not maybe the third time, that, that Big Cinco will have seen it for Clemson. But there's just something a little bit different. I, I think Clemson's going to win the game. I don't, and I think it's probably a multi-score win, like a ten to thirteen point win. But this feels like a spot where everybody wants to take Clemson, and oh yeah, they're going to kill Syracuse, and Syracuse is fraudulent and all that stuff. I think Syracuse actually has the ability to go in there and make this a game, um, and, and I, I don't know that they're ever really going to threaten to win because again, I don't know how many points they're going to score, but I do think that they can limit what Clemson's offense is able to do. So maybe Clemson wins this game something like 28 to 17 or something like that. Um, I, I think that the Syracuse team total in this game, honestly, is the thing I'd be most interested in actually betting. Um, but give me Syracuse to win this game, or not to, not to win this game, Clemson to win this game, something like maybe like 27, 14. Like it might be like a cover by the hook kind of thing. Um, but give me Syracuse in the under here. I, I think that they will keep this close and keep it competitive and and make this difficult for Clemson's offense to where it's it's not just like a total runaway. And there's also a potential backdoor cover pos- uh, situation here as well. We we disagree, but we do. We agree we agree on Clemson winning. So, yes. Yeah, I as much as Dino has multiple wins over Dabo over the last five, six years, whatever it's been. I don't think this is one of those years. I, I don't think Garrett Schrader is that quarterback that's going to be able to I don't either. win against <laughs> Clemson's defense over a full 60 minutes. But can they create a few broken plays that, you know, get them into scoring range, kick field goals, you know, score touchdowns, whatever, and then give Clemson's offense some problems? I think they can. Okay. Hey, so, hey we'll see. We'll see. I think I, I want to be on the record. And just say mm-hmm. that they this game could be ugly in the first half. Like mm-hmm. Syracuse has the ability to ugly this thing up. I just think Clemson in the second half is going to be. I, I just think over four quarters that's where Clemson kind of pulls away. But like I think Syracuse is going to hang for a bit. Mm-hmm. I don't see this being like a blowout from the jump or anything like that. Like I do. And hey, if Clemson does that, that'll be really impressive. Yeah. Well, and, and to me, I think I think Clemson wins this game by like ten to twenty one points. Yeah, like either that's where I'm at like too. they're they're going to win kind of comfortably. It's just a matter of can Syracuse keep it close enough. I'm saying they can. Understand if if you know other people don't think that they can. Like it's yeah, I get it. Yeah. Um, other thing I will point out for the record, <laughs> one of our yeah. favorite listeners, and he's a Virginia fan, Chris oh, Grondon. Right. Yep. tweeted out yesterday, and this got this got the people going on Twitter. Sean Tucker yards per carry in 2021, 6.1. Sean Tucker yards per carry in 2022, 5.2. Down almost a yard per carry. Wayne Talapapa yards in 2021 at Virginia, 324. Wayne Talapapa yards in 2022 at Washington through only seven games, 424. Sometimes it's the coaches, not the players. To that I say, Chris, I think you're on to something. It seems like there's a pattern of running backs not succeeding as much under Robert and I. <laughs> and that's just numbers. I'm not saying Sean Tucker's not good. I'm not saying he's not the, the star player of your offense, Syracuse. He is. He's great. He's got a great Twitter account. We love him. But, like, you can't deny that he's he's not as effective, he's not as explosive, he's not as consistently good this year as he was last year. He still is those things, just not as much as last year. And it's okay. But in it's turn, okay. But in turn, the quarterback position has gotten better. Like Garrett Schrader mm-hmm. is better through the air than he was a year ago. And I think that's they because found of Robert a receiver. and I. Yeah, they, and they found a receiver. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean... Like I said, there's there's a correlation between Robert and I leaving UVA and Brandon Armstrong like not being very good this year. Like there's a correlation there, and I don't there think it also it's... might be a correlation in Robert and I showing up at Syracuse and them 
suddenly both. not getting as good at running the ball. Why can't why can't both things be true? That's correct. I'm with you. But <laughs> they're all true. They're all true. It's okay. It's, it's okay. It's very college football is very like not black and white. Yeah, not even close. Not yes. even close. Syracuse in the under for me. Clemson in the over for Mike. Um, I, I feel like those combinations of picks are really your only options in this game. Is That's that fair, Mike? Can I add one nugget for this game? Um, Producer Scott has a nugget. Yeah, Mike mentioned at the beginning of his breakdown, the Will Shipley game, we had a comment on our YouTube video, actually, from Volusa is Orange that said, Mm. Will Shipley should have been our player of the week last week. He had almost 250 all-purpose yards. So I think Mike's on to something about Will Shipley, and we're sorry to Volusa Orange for not picking Will Shipley as player of the week. (laughs) Valid point. I'll give that. Yeah, very valid. It's, I mean... Shipley does get stronger as the game goes on, right? No doubt about mm-hmm. it. So, oh, well, and, and I, I'll say this too, though. Like Mike, you mentioned in the in the recap from week seven, this is the Will Shipley game. They gave it to him twenty times for you know all those yards, all that stuff. And I had a comment that I never really did make, but I want to make it now. It's like, why isn't every game a Will Shipley game? That dude yeah. is good. Like you should be giving him the ball a lot more every game. Yeah. I mean, if he's not getting 20 to 25 touches between the running game and the passing game, you're doing something wrong. Mm-hmm. And that's before you yeah, even you're, count. Yeah, you're wasting. Into... Go ahead, sorry. I just, you're, you're wasting that talent if you're not doing that. Agree, and that's before you even take into account his ability in the return game, which we saw on full display last weekend against Florida State. Exactly. Yeah, he, he's a special guy. So give him the ball, Clemson. Yeah, give him the ball. Syracuse in the under for me, Clemson in the over for Mike. Let's keep going here. At 11.30 on, sorry, 12.30 Eastern, I'm looking at Central Time numbers, uh, at 12.30 Eastern on ESPN3, it's the Jefferson Pilot Special. Go ahead and saddle up for Duke on the road in South Beach, taking on the Miami Hurricanes. Miami is a nine-point favorite at home. Total is 58. I'm a little spooked by this number, Mike. Like, I feel like I'm missing something. Do you get a feeling like that at all with this game? I do. Yeah, I do. I mean, I is Miami nine points better than anybody right now? I think that's, like, my initial takeaway. But mm-hmm. at the same time, like, it's set at nine for a reason, right? I mean, we were mm-hmm. thinking the same thing. I was, Certainly, I was thinking the same thing when I saw Oklahoma favored by, like, eight and a half against Kansas last weekend. I was like, are we really – is Oklahoma eight and a half points better than anybody in the Big 12 right now? Mm-hmm. And – you know, lo and behold, Oklahoma was certainly the better team against Kansas last Saturday. This is a weird line. I am going to hold my nose here and take Duke. I think mm-hmm. Miami wins the game. I just think Miami's more talented, and not that that's ever mattered before because Duke always finds a way to <laughs> ugly these games up, Joey. In the history we've been doing this podcast, it feels like every time we talk about Duke and Miami, it's about something weird that happened. Um, that's probably going to be the case again on Saturday, right? Whether it's like the kick return where the runner's knee wasn't down or, you know. <laughs> Remember that one, Joey. Uh, Miami is more talented, and it doesn't matter. Is like one of the finest memes of this whole podcast history. Like, yes, yeah. <laughs> for We're years totally and great. years, we have said that. <laughs> Even like the one year Miami was good, like it was still kind of a thing. Um, mm-hmm. Where it was like, yeah, they won ten, but they were kind of fraudulent doing it. Uh, mm-hmm. Had incredible turnover luck. Uh, anyway, back to this game. I, I think Miami wins. I think Duke covers here. Um, Keeps it within nine. I just what a gross line. I feel like I'm walking into a trap. But I think Duke mm-hmm. covers nine here. I'll tell you what I do feel really good about though. Um, neither one of these defenses can stop really anybody right now. Like Duke, Duke's defense, I haven't really thought has been really all that good. I, th- I thought they've been okay, right? But I think like Carolina showed just how bad Duke's defense can be, which I don't know says more about Carolina or more about Duke. But what I will say, too, is, like, we know Miami's defense is bad. Like, they couldn't stop Middle Tennessee State. They clearly had some issues against Carolina in terms of yards. They tightened up in the red zone a bit and played a bit better defensively in that game. But they gave up a ton of yards in that game to Drake May and the Carolina offense. Like, Miami's going to give up yards. or going to give up points here. So, Joey, over 58, lock it up. You better lock it up. You better lock it up. No, you lock it up. Lock it up. Lock it up. Lock it up. Please.
<laughs> yeah, we got two locks this week. We got two locks mm. this week. And I think this game's going over. I think this game's going over. That's a lot of points, but I think it's going over. I will say that's a little dangerous because in these teams' games so far, the over is 3-8. and eight. Through 11 games, eight of them have gone under for these two teams. So it's possible. And I see I see the logic. I just, I don't know, it makes me nervous. Make it four and eight on Saturday, baby. <laughs> five and eight, technically. Yeah, I guess five and eight. Yeah, yeah, they, they, yeah, I guess they both be involved. So make, uh, yeah, five and eight. That's right. That's correct. Mike, I agree. Give me Duke. Give me Duke in the points at the very least. Uh, as I didn't want to lay seven plus with Miami last week against Virginia Tech, I sure as hell do not want to lay seven plus this week against uh, against Duke. Duke is better than Virginia Tech. I don't know, like Miami didn't cover that. I don't know why you're getting a bigger number other than being at home and getting some home field advantage. So, give me Duke in the points at the very least, Mike. I think Duke might win this game on the field. Ooh, I think Ooh. give me Duke outright. Miami cool. is not a well-coached team. Duke is like, once again, Miami is the better, you know, the more talented team, and it doesn't really matter. We have said that for how the hell long at this point. Miami tried to give that game away against Virginia Tech last week. They might go up early in this game. That Duke team plays hard for Mike Elko. They don't make a lot of mistakes. Like, if I find out that this Duke team comes and you know, puts together a, court, a comeback in the fourth quarter and wins this game outright, it will not surprise me at all. I think Duke wins in South Beach or Coral Gables or wherever. Um, I, I give me the Blue Devils outright. I, I mean, look, if Duke wins this game in the trenches on both sides of the ball, which doesn't seem as far fetched as maybe some of you think it is, they could win this game. Mm-hmm. So just keep an eye on how the battle up front is going on both sides of the ball, which I know is like the story of almost every football game, right? But seriously, Duke's not as far off in the trenches as people think they are in this mm-hmm. in this particular game. So that's going to tell a lot about the outcome. Producer Scott, do we have a, a money line number here for Duke to win the game at a spread outside of a touchdown? Uh, the last money line I saw was plus 245 from FanDuel here in Virginia. So I would take that. I might do that too. Might be interested. Give me under 58. Again, I'll just follow the trend there and, and think that these offenses are going to s- screw up enough and or the defenses are going to come up with enough stops. Um, I, I I don't think this game gets you know into the, into the upper 30s, basically. I, I think this could be like a 31-28, which that's 59. Uh, thir- 30 to... 24. 30 to 24, Duke. Sure. <laughs> it fits. You want to know how much I, I thought out that spread ahead of time? I know. I did the it math was... live and realized it didn't work, and I picked a new I, score. That's fine. I've done that. Hey, no judgment here. I have done that plenty and have screwed it up plenty on this podcast, so don't worry about that at all. By the way, and just one more, one more little note here for anyone looking to potentially lay points with Miami. This is a Miami home game. Think about what this stadium is going to look like at 12:30 on a Saturday against on Duke. Jefferson Pilot against Duke. And you mentioned, mm-hmm. oh yeah, I don't know why they're catching nine, except for it was a pretty funny statement you made. Uh, other than like the fact it's at home and they have home field advantage, and I'm thinking, I'm just chuckling in my head. I'm like, yeah, like I get that betters, you know, you factor in like two and a half to three points based on home field advantage, but. I mean, Hard Rock on a Saturday at noon against Duke. Yeah, that place will be jumping, all right. Miami might have been more fired up to play in Blacksburg last week, honestly, than than to play at home. <laughs> yeah, man. That was that, that was at least a sold-out environment. What are you getting out of Hard Rock? Not much. There might be Maybe more a Mi- thunderstorm in the middle of the third quarter. Honestly, there might have been more Miami fans in Blacksburg than there will be at this game this weekend. <laughs> That's a take. I like it. It's all right. It's a take, but again, not too far off. Might not be. Might not be. Uh, Duke and the under for me. Duke and the over for Mike. And Mike has the over locked up. Um, and by the way, I've got Duke money line just to make that very clear. Duke outright. We'll see how yeah, that goes. We will. 
You ready to move on, Mike? Man, we're getting spicy this week. Yes, continue. Oh, it's oh, we're gonna get more spicy here at two uh, three thirty, three thirty Eastern, two thirty Central on the ACC Network. The Boston College Eagles on the road in Winston Salem, taking on the number thirteen Wake Forest Steeman Deeks. The Deeks are a twenty and a half point home favorite. Total is sixty one. Um, Mike. 20 and a half. I mean, Wake is going to going to have no problem going up and down the field. They're going to score a lot of points. I don't know. Give me Boston College. I feel like this number is telling me to take Boston College. It is it is daring you to take Wake Forest. So I'll I'll take Boston College. Uh no. I got Wake like 40 to 17. Does that stay under the total? It does. There you go. Real time. Barely, yeah. Wake, wake in the under is what I'm on. Give me a wake like 40 to 17. I've got, yeah, Boston College like 35 17. Okay. Which so, is yeah. same reasonable. idea, but <laughs> reasonable. <laughs> and that's, yeah. I mean, I think, again, I think Wake Forest wins this game comfortably. I just think 20 and a half is too much. Um, I don't think that Dave Clawson is going to try to really run it up here. And, and Boston College, both these teams coming off a bye, right? Yeah, neither of these teams have played the last couple of weeks. Um, Boston College, they looked – I mean, they struggled. I, I, they didn't look bad against Clemson two weeks ago when they played them at home in the homecoming game, red bandana game, like all that stuff. They, they lost by 28 points, but they didn't look bad. They were, just, they were just purely overmatched by a really good Clemson team. Prior to that, they beat Louisville. I, I thought they – I don't know. They, they they didn't really hang with Florida State a little bit. I'm I'm grasping here a little bit, truthfully. <laughs> but do I think Boston College can come out of the bye week and be prepared to at least give Wake a little bit of a game and keep them from totally running off with it? I think so. I just don't want to lay three touchdowns. That's just a lot of points. BC is some ass, though. Yeah. Some, some, therefore, their fault. Some, not their fault. I mean, it's it's interesting hearing hearing you call like Virginia or Virginia Tech definitively the best team in the or the worst team in the ACC. When, uh, <laughs> I was like, hold on, one second, hold on, hold on, hold on. This this whole season is just defined by me not being good at talking anymore. So there's that. But um, <laughs> having two kids will do that to you. I've heard. Yes, it will. Um, yeah, and you're only halfway there, but. Virginia and Virginia Tech being like definitively the worst teams in the ACC has me wondering like did he forget that Boston College is a thing because they have been rough at times this year they're two and yeah. four and uh, does not seem like it's getting better. I mean it's Virginia Tech's only FBS win. Yeah, so. that's all you need to know. And they won that game comfortably, by the way. Oh, I mean they beat they beat they that ass. That game. They beat that ass. <laughs> yeah, that game was not really that competitive. They beat that ass. So yeah, and then Boston College turned around and beat Louisville. So it's it's so funny. We'll get there here in a minute. It's so funny how like everybody overreacts the first couple weeks of the season because like Tech lost that opener to ODU, and then when they beat BC the way they did, I was like, you know what, they'll be fine. Definitely mm-hmm. get to six wins, and then they've looked totally <laughs> incompetent since then. Not gonna lie, I was uh, I was feeling myself a little bit earlier this week when I went back and listened to the uh, Virginia Tech preview and I dropped that little nugget in there of I think Virginia Tech's going to go 4 and 8 and you talked about me like I was crazy and <laughs> the re- the reason that I bet on sports mike is not about the money it's about being right. <laughs> I like to be right and when I'm right it feels really good. <laughs> yeah. You've been right so far. Yeah, for better or worse. Yeah. So Boston College in the under for me, Wake in the under for you. Yeah, do you like? Are there keys to this game? Is there a breakdown here, or is it just like, dude, this is a three touchdown spread? Like, I mean, take your yeah, choice on like, are they going to cover or not? Like, <laughs> yeah, like, are we going to have a Phil Dracovic and Sam Hartman shoot out through the air? Like, absolutely not. We're not now. This isn't now. This isn't twenty twenty. No, I think now. We're, I will say. Go ahead. I, don't, I I'm not. I'm not on a uh, a book that has any like player props. But if you if you are, I think this is an interesting game to go find a couple player props for Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers might have like 140 yards and two scores in this game. So 
If you're seeing like a Zay Flowers over under 69 and a half receiving yards, like go over that total. I think he'll he'll put up some numbers against this Wake Forest secondary. Yeah, I mean, Wake Forest defense, I think this year has been fine. But not great, but fine. Right, like not not definitely not gr- <laughs> definitely not great. Maybe not even good, but they've been fine. They they haven't been terrible like they've been in the past. I think they've just mm-hmm. been okay. Some games are better than others. And yes. This is a good game to play well in cuz BC can't block anybody up front. So Yeah. This might be a get-right Wake game. Wake is sneaky Wake is sneaky good up front on defense. They are they are, which is where I think BC could have some issues is up front, right? Which is kind of where they always have issues, but like for all the hell like Wake Forest, They're they're good up front. And I think that's where BC is going to have some some issues, especially if this gets into a game where Wake Forest gets out by a couple scores and now BC has to throw a bunch. Uh, yeah, pin your ears back and go get Phil Dracovic. I just don't I, – I don't see how this works out for Boston College, especially if Wake gets out in front, goes out running a little bit. I'll say this too about Phil Dracovic is I feel like there were a couple of moments in the Louisville game that I was watching where – they made me wonder, it, is there something at a at a deeper, like, psychological level happening that's kind of, like, breaking Phil Dracovic a little bit? Because, yeah. Because, like, we, we saw a couple of moments where he made just bafflingly horrible decisions that resulted in turnovers or, or you know, put the, put the team and the ball in danger, basically. That's like, he was not doing this a year or two ago. And, and I don't know if there's desperation. I don't know what is going on there. But um, this, this is also a spot where if Wake starts getting after him a little bit, who knows what he's going to start doing and out of that like apparent desperation or whatever. Who knows? I think an underrated part of this whole thing, and, and why I said, yeah, like I, I don't know if Dracovic's actually having like psychological issues or not, but like what, no. what I think is uh, – <laughs> There's so many there's so many jokes I can make about just like you know lucky he's not being coached by Steve Adazio, right? It could be a lot worse. <laughs> but um I th- I think an underrated thing here is like BC lost a bunch of talent up front, right? And then Chris Mahogany, the only guy they had left towards ACL like over the summer. So they really had nobody coming back who was like really experienced or seasoned at all up front. And then on top of that, they're replacing their offensive coordinator. Like Frank Signetti left. Mm-hmm. So now all of a sudden, like you got an offense, like a schematic change offensively, and then you have to replace a bunch of talent up front. Like there's a reason why BC is struggling offensively. Like yeah. it's easy to figure. It's it's not hard to figure out. But the the fact that they lost their offensive coordinator, I know Signetti is, you know, not the greatest offensive coordinator in the world, right? But like that's significant. Yeah. Well, and it was, I mean, again, we, we thought pretty highly of this program under Jeff Halfley for the first couple of years. Part of that was whatever contributions Frank Signetti was making with that offense. Right. And I don't and think Signetti, and, and, and I don't think Signetti's like a, a bad OC, but I don't think he's mm-hmm. like this like outstanding, I, I think he's, I think he's fine, right? I mean, he goes to pit, they're running the ball all over everybody. Like, I think he's fine, but like, I don't. I don't know if it's like at the same time like that easy to replace a guy like Snetty overnight either. Yeah. So there's a reason we talk about Jeff Lebby and uh, I don't know. I, I'm struggling to come up with other, you know, like big time national offensive coordinator names off the top of my head. But like there's a reason we talk about those guys and Frank Signetti's name doesn't come up in that conversation. But his name also doesn't come up in the conversation of like, why is this team struggling? Like, yeah, he, he's he's pretty solid for what he is. He belongs at the P5 level and in the ACC. Like, he did well at Boston College. He's doing just fine at Pittsburgh. So, um, yeah, but you never know, you know, what, what drop-off might be there after he leaves the situation. And, and clearly there's been something with Boston College. And so is that, you know, how much of that is, is talent and, and players versus how much of that is, is Signetti, you know. So, I don't know. Signetti being gone. Right. But, Not with you. In any case. All right. Uh, Boston College plus the twenty and a half for me. Wake minus the twenty and a half for Mike, and under the sixty-one for the both of us. Last game, Mike, game of the week, the game we've all been looking forward to on the ACC Network at eight o'clock. The Pitt Panthers 
on the road at the venue formerly known as Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Now it's just regular Cardinal Stadium, I think. They, they might have gotten a new sponsor. It's fine. Whatever. The Louisville Cardinals. Uh, Louisville is a two and a half. <laughs> Sorry. Go big, go big Papa. Uh, right. Louisville is a two and a half point home favorite. Total is 55. Mike, I don't have a lock yet this week. And I can't can't help but feeling like I am uh, feeling a little bit left out. So I guess I got to lock up something here, right? I have a feeling I know what that is, Joey. How do you feel about Pittsburgh in this game? I don't know if I feel great about Pittsburgh in this game, but I feel better than I do feel about Louisville in this game. Give me Pitt, lock it up. You better lock it up. You better lock it up. No, you lock it up. You lock it up. Lock it up. Lock it up. Please. Um, yeah, go ACC to that. I look. Give me Pitt plus the two and a half. Give me Pitt on the field. I told you a couple weeks ago I am out on this Louisville team. Now, you might be saying, well, Joey, you said that, and then they beat Virginia by 17 points. They had a bye week, and now they get Malik Cunningham back. Like, are you still out on Louisville? And my answer is yes, I am. Yes, I am I'm out on this team. I do not trust them. Um, I think that this is going to spiral at some point on Scott Satterfield. I think Pitt is hungry. Um, I think that they, they got embarrassed a couple weeks ago there by Georgia Tech. Um, they – they had a, a win where they, you know, they ran the ball all over Virginia Tech, but like they gave up a bunch of points, and I think there was maybe a little bit of an embarrassment there with what they let the Hokies' offense do. I just think Pitt comes out off the off the um, the bye week. I think they come out physical. I think they they give Louisville some problems. I don't know that Louisville has a great answer, and there's just been a certain magic that's been missing with Louisville's offense this year. So. Give me, give me Pittsburgh outright on the field. I think Louisville ends up disappointed. It sucks. I don't like it, but it is what it is. And, um, yeah, I'll lock up Pittsburgh plus the two and a half, and I think they win outright. I'm, I'm on Pitt here. Um, I think Pitt wins. I, <laughs> it, it, I guess in an upset. I don't know. I think the wrong team's favored, like even though it's, it's a road game for Pitt. I think Pitt wins this football game. I know that they had – you know a really embarrassing loss like not too long ago i get that but like i also mm-hmm. think that louisville's gonna have trouble bottling pittsburgh up so yeah. give me the panthers also boys i have to escape right now because the kid is screaming upstairs so i have to help my wife so All i'm right. going to have joey i'm going to have you uh take it out from here with producer scott and i'm going to dip after being like an hour late so see ya mike tell the kid we said hey Yep. Enjoy the games. We'll talk afterwards. Yep, absolutely. See you. All right. Well, fair enough. Yeah, Pitt. Uh, I guess Pitt is the pick for the both of us, um, plus the two and a half and outright on the field. And uh, I don't know. Maybe, it, it makes sense. Again, the vibes are not great around Louisville. We're kind of all just waiting around for Scott Satterfield to get fired, and I think that's what you know, could be expected. And part of the reason, and let's just see if this is working right now, uh, part of the reason I, th- I think – with Louisville's defense, at least at times, there's really been kind of one word that I can think to describe them, and it goes something like Plus the two and a half locked up. Um, and give me the over, too. Uh, the total's 55. I, I think this gets a little bit pointy. I think Louisville maybe does find a way to score on this pit pit defense a little bit. It does seem like they have had some issues this year. Um but I also think that Pitt's going to find ways to continue running the ball down the throat uh, of a Louisville defense that has not really been the most receptive to uh, physical offensive attacks over the last couple of years. So um, Pitt outright. Mike also has Pitt outright, and uh, he also has the over in this game. So that's all I've got there. Producer Scott. Joey, I have a question. Um, yes. Do you do? We, can we set an over under for Izzy Abanaconda's rushing total? Ooh, we can. Would you like to you set think? one, or would you like me to? I'm thinking about 140. What do you think? I was I was gonna go like 134 and a half. So I was in in the neighborhood. Um, I'll go I'll go under that, not by much. I I do think he's able to get to that hundred ish plus yard mark. Um, I think he might come up a little bit short. I, I think, obviously, coming off of a 320-yard performance a couple weeks ago, everyone thinks that you know he might go for 200 yards in this game, and he might, but I, I would play the odds that maybe he gets stifled a little short of that. So I'll go under 140, but I don't think that's a bad line. Yeah. Um, 
I wasn't quite sure. I saw him shred our Hokies a couple weeks ago for 300 plus yards, and I'm not super familiar with the Louisville defense. So, assuming you are, as you're a secondary fan of the Louisville Cardinals, uh, mm-hmm. I would hope you know better. So, you're going under. All right, under. Well, yeah, Louisville, I mean, under Scott Satterfield, they've had problems on defense. Just like carte blanche, like they've had problems on defense. <laughs> like they just haven't been very good. I, I think there's been a couple of moments where they've looked a little bit better this year, um, and I know they added a co-defensive coordinator. I, the name is escaping me right now to join Brian Brown. Um, but just, I mean, again, the general vibes around this program, and Scott Satterfield, if I'm not mistaken, is, is still like one of the favorites to be the next coach fired across the country. Like, Those are not things I want to see in a team that I want to lay points with at this point, I guess. I So... I would love for them to win this game. I hope they win. Uh, they need to win this game for the sake of bowl eligibility because, again, after this, their final five are Wake Forest, James Madison at Clemson, NC State at Kentucky. They need to win three more games. If they don't win this one, where are the three out of those five that they're going to win? I don't know. I don't I'm know. taking James Madison, just saying. <laughs> yeah, outright, probably. Like mm-hmm. They've looked a lot more competent than Louisville has at moments this year, so... Yeah, I don't know. Not getting good vibes. I hope they win, but I'm not picking them to. All right. Fair enough. All right, Pitt and the over for the both of us. I've got Pitt locked up. That's all we've got on week eight, Scott. Uh, to recap the locks, Mike has th- two lock. Well, two locks, sorry. He had a third lock that was from last week, and it was uh, running up against us in the spreadsheet. Anyways, he has Georgia Tech minus the three on Thursday night and uh, Miami Duke over 58 on Saturday afternoon. I have Pitt minus, or plus the two and a half at Louisville. I'll take him outright as well. I didn't, I didn't feel great about any of these lines from the standpoint of trying to lock them up. So this was the best that I felt about it. But honestly, I had a couple of bets out, like, you know, real personal actual money last weekend uh, I will not have bets on probably any of these games in, in real life so uh, just for what that's worth you know do with it what you will again if you want to participate in the fade Joey movement that has been very successful in recent years this is uh, probably a good time to do so but um, that's all that's all I got Scott anything else we need to cover before we work on uh, getting out of here yeah Joey our boys oh, our boys <laughs> here what, what are we looking at we're looking at bowling green is visiting the central michigan chippewas they are six and a half point dogs bowling green on the road the falcons the falcons less than a touchdown six and a half give me the chips fire up chips no way fire up, fire up chips i agree i will gladly lay less than a touchdown against scott leffler's uh bowling green falcons <laughs> and the weather looks nasty up there in Michigan this weekend. So, ooh, Maybe some all right, snow. we'll go ACC to that. Bet the under. <laughs> we are. It's at fifty and a half. <laughs> there you go. Maction with a total of fifty and a half. We're taking the under in the weather. That is a uh, make sure you you set your DVR to to capture that game. You'll want to watch that later for sure. All right, that's it. That's all I got. All right, fair enough. Scott, let's get out of here. Uh, Let's do it. We are gonna, we're going to come back. We're going to go watch these games, come back, recap them. Uh, you know, never know. Maybe a little Saturday night. Keep it, keep it tuned here in case. But if not, it'll be Sunday, probably like usual. Um, in the meantime, you can find us. I am at FTRS Joey. He is at Mike McDaniel SI. Together we're at BC Podcast ACC. Scott, what's your, uh, what's your Twitter handle for the people? <laughs> My Twitter handle is at Severus Snipes, like Severus Snape, but I don't think that's relevant to these people. <laughs> there you go. Go find at Severus Snipes on Twitter. Give him some follows. Uh, by the way, we didn't mention on this this whole podcast, and that's a failure of mine. Uh, go find us on YouTube. Go find Basketball Conference on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. We've been trying to get those numbers up. We've been doing well. Thank you, guys. There's been a number of you all. The, the subscriber numbers are climbing by the week, and we really appreciate that. But go find us. If we get to 100 subscribers, we will have uh, a, our own dedicated URL. Until then, just go search for Basketball Conference. We are up to 72 subscribers as of this recording scott 72 and we're uh, up 42 in the last 28 days so if we keep that trend going we'll be there in no time please do please do so go hit subscribe on youtube we would really appreciate that if you were listening right now 
Uh, we are on iTunes. We're on Spotify, all the good places you can go find podcasts. Once again, we're on YouTube. We're also on Instagram, at BC Podcast ACC. And as always, you can send us an email with your questions, your comments, your concerns. It's the longest email address known to man, basketballconferencepodcast at gmail.com. Nailed it. Thank you. Um, by the way, we did have an email from Ray Napick. Um, we'll we'll get to that here. We'll get to that on the recap. I promise. Um, we do that with with Mike being here. But um, it was a Georgia Tech and kind of Brent Key related email that then um, asked about our perf- uh, our preferences for who makes the ACC championship game. To which first I would say we love all of our ACC teams and, and we would be happy for any of them to make it. But um, Mike and I will talk about that on the uh, the recap. We promise. Uh, Scott, they can find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash basketball conference. Uh, that's where we ask you to rate and review and you will find some of our podcasts there. <laughs> yep. Just some of them. Don't know what happened to all of them. And we've been, uh, we've been having fun posting the uh, weekly picks and, uh, usually like Friday afternoons or so on uh, Facebook and Instagram. So again, go find us there and, uh, we will keep you updated with all the things we got coming. Yep. At BC podcast, ACC on all social medias, go find us. Scott, did I forget anything? Are we good? I think we're good. I apologize for my lack of podcasting skills filling for Mike, but I am here. You're killing it. You're doing a great job. Keep it up. Proud of you. (laughs) All right. All right. Let's get out of here. Let's go watch some games, come back, and recap them. Uh, Until then, for Mr. Mike McDaniel and producer Scott, I am Joey Weaver. Thank you guys so much for listening. Enjoy the games. We'll talk to you again soon. And until then... Go ACC.